In this demo, I'll be painting lots of boats, lots of different sizes of boats and crafts. This is Teemuth in the UK and what's called, I believe, the Back Beach. This photograph taken by me was taken in the summer, um, late afternoon. Sun is just beginning to set over the river. Team were looking west. Uh, over towards, I'm I'm basically in Teamworth here, but we're looking towards the village or small town of Sheldon on that left-hand side there. And there's a a long road bridge joining the two over the River Teen. What attracted me to this scene? Well, an exercise in painting lots of boats, a classic contrajour scene, looking into the light, where which works really well for watercolour. So we've got lots of silhouetted shapes, for example, these silhouetted shapes of these boats there. Um, this fishing craft on the on the right hand side. And also then little bits of light catching objects. So the light on, on the water there in, in on the river, uh, a little bit of light on the shoreline, light hitting the gunnels of these boats there uh, and also in the shadows as well different a different range in values we've got the lights we've got the darks look how dark it is at the bottom of the hull of this boat and the shadow going across the beach the shadow on this side of the the other boats as well from a composition point of view, I think it works quite well in that we've got a nice row of, of boats sort of going that way. We've got a row of boats going this way as well. We've got we've got foreground interest in these boats. We've got a little bit of middle ground going on there and the, the distant background. So a lot of different things that we can explore in, in this watercolour in this watercolour demonstration. No figures on this one. Uh, there was actually a dog running. When I took this photo, there was actually a dog, a Labrador, running backwards and forwards, and its owner sat to my left would, would be chucking a, a ball out to sea, and uh, <laughs> this Labrador would be constantly going backwards and forwards. But no, it's quite simple, just boats, just purely boats, this one. Contrajour, looking into the light, seeing we're getting the the lovely contrasts of of light and dark in this team of scene. So let's get started. I'll describe my colours as I go through at the painting stage. The first step is to do the outline drawing and the all important boat shapes that we've got here in front of us. So if you want to have the source photo in front of you as I paint, I can't fit everything on the screen. I like to have, when I'm doing these YouTube videos, doing these videos, have the maximum painting area and the palette on screen and not bother with the source photo. So just go back to the, uh, open up another window or tab on your browser and and uh, pause that uh, source photo up there. Members of Patreon, I get to share. Uh, I get to share with my Patreon members a high res image of the, the source image and a high res image of my finished painting. Uh, so just go up to, if you're not a Patreon member, go up to patreon.com slash Tim Walmart and you'll see all the uh, interesting painting activities we get up to there. So main boat on the left, starting with that, first of all, getting in this, I guess it's mainly sort of a, a work type craft. I'm not sure if it's a tugboat. I don't think it's a fishing craft, but it's a sort of working boat. And up, it's low tide and it's sort of there beached up on the uh, up on the shoreline so get that one in first and then slip in the other boats around that to re really sort of following 
pretty much my my photograph, which I think was it sort of had a nice connection of all these boats together. The actual angle at which I was was viewing things, they, they all seemed to connect quite well with each other. So rather than changing that, I'll keep to keep to that um, th that sort of configuration of boats. And they, they're generally actually quite easy to do, these boats, when you're looking at them head on like this, or just a slight angle. And I think the trick is with these boats, when you're looking at, looking at them at an angle, the small boats like this, and looking down slightly down on them, looking down on the, the tops of them, you've got the, the far side is fairly straight. And then the side nearest to us has that gentle curve from the front to the back, the bow to the stern. So this one, for example, get the back in straight edge furthest away from us up to the bow and then a bit of a gentle curve up from the stern. Get in the front of the boat, a little bit of the side there for the hull and continue along the, the bottom of the hull. Then on the right hand side, just a little bit showing there, but now there's the next boat. So start with the back of the boat, fairly straight on the far side, gentle curve on the near side, coming up to a sharper point, get in the side of the boat, along the bottom of the boat, up to the bow of the boat. And then it's just a case of filling in in the inside the, the the seats for example trying to get those looking as if they're parallel as well so there's a little bit of perspective to deal with slightly different boat here this is a yacht with the mast taken down but it's got some of these keels showing it's resting on the beach then continuing on behind that a little bit of a curve for another boat that's just sneaked in behind this fishing boat this larger fishing boat on the right hand side which I'm going to draw really simply it's on the right hand side I'm not I'm not going to put too much detail into that boat there on that side now I need to make sure all these boats are looking good enough to before I start painting the the last thing I want to do is to start painting when I haven't when I haven't done all the drawing correctly or there's there's some mistakes so I need to make sure the drawing is correct and double check everything before I start painting sneak in a little another little boat there so we've got a line of craft going down to the the water line a little bit of, on that right hand side slightly big one then a medium sized one then a smaller one going towards the the back there. The paints I'm using are from Jackman's Art Materials in the UK, handmade paints, very good quality paints and very quite attractively priced as well. So the colours I'm using, going from the top on the right hand side, I've got neutral tint, then I've got burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, Viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and ultramarine blue, nearly there, Al alizarin crimson, Windsor, uh, sorry, cadmium red, no, light red, cadmium orange, and cadmium yellow. But I'm just dropping in a little bit of this sky color, tiny bit of cerulean, tiny bit of cobalt I've, i'm using a very soft mop brush here and just gradually coming down the scene there's a gentle slope on the board so the paint is just falling down the page as i come down there's some nice clouds that are just catching the light in the sky and so i've just left out a little bit of the paper showing and that is pretty much the sky done 
Now I want to keep the horizon quite light in the distance there. So I've come down to the horizon line. Now I'm mixing up now some colour for the water. I'm going a little bit thicker, same soft brush. I've got fairly rough paper here. Well, it's medium texture. This is cold press watercolour paper. And this brush with the flat edge, not too much paint on the brush, just flicking it from the left hand side, dragging it ever so lightly across the top of the surface of the paper. And hopefully, we'll get just a few sparkles in the water. It's a little bit darker than the sky. So it will dry a little bit lighter. So just dragging that across. And as you can see, we're just starting to get a few little sparkles there. You can, I know a lot of people might use masking fluid for this beforehand, just mask out that area, maybe put in a few little a few little dots of masking fluid. I prefer to use, if you've got rough paper, even better. Um, the, the, this is cold press, so it's not the roughest uh, surface you can get. But rough paper would be even better at this. Uh, that's the C done, not tamper with it once it's done. So just dragging that soft brush in, not too much paint. Now for the left hand side and the start of the the jetty and a little bit of the the boat on the left hand side. This jetty's got a bit of light hitting the top and then also the the gaps between the blocks on the harbour wall. It's just catching a little bit of light. So I'll go in darker later on, but this is just a just a sort of base colour. This this first wash is just really covering up most of the paper, except for those highlights or those areas that I want to develop in a, in a particular way. Now let's get a bit warmer for the beach, the shoreline, and the beach, the sandy beach coming up towards us. Go over these boats, except for the gunnels of the boats. Go a little bit cooler on the left hand side, add in a bit of cobalt blue, light red, cambium red, bit of ultramarine blue. I'm trying to replicate here the, the sand and the different texture that we've got in the sand and bits of seaweed that's strewn across the beach, but not too, I want to keep it fairly soft, not too hard, not too hard at edge with some of the, say the bits of seaweed, because that would just draw a little bit too much attention to, to the uh, beach. I want, I want the main focus to be on these boats, a little bit lighter down towards the shoreline, paint over these boats, they're going to be darker later on. Pick up a bit more water. My water container is over to the right. Pick up a bit more water. So we've gone a bit lighter still over to the right hand side. All quite light down near the, the water line, the water's edge. And then as we come towards me, go warmer and thicker towards the foreground towards uh, towards me and just with these brush strokes brush direction just introducing lots of variation there dropping in some extra color adding in a little bit of blue add, adding in a bit more red just so that it's not too uh, a, a sort of monochrome flattish flattish wash so light red, cadmium orange.
And some of these white boats, they're they're sort of re reflecting. They have the reflection of the the sand color on them, so they're not true, truly white. They're they're inheriting some of the color of the reflected sand around them. Go a little bit darker on the right hand side, a bit more seaweed up there or over on that side. And then that's this biggest boat. Be careful as I paint around that straightish far edge. And then just close up that little gap there for the bow of that boat. Then over the fishing boat on the right hand side. Again, that will be a lot darker as well. It doesn't really matter what color I'm, I'm putting in there. It's, it's going to be mostly covered with shadow and um, the, the side of the harbor on that side. Just need to mop out that little spot that's uh, appeared there. It's quite easy to do that with a tissue uh, when you when you spot it. There's something not quite right to lift off with the tissue. It works it works quite well, and you can't really um, see what was there before. So that's really that first wash done. I can now add into the beach a little bit of darker color, just while it's all still a little bit damp so ultramarine blue a little bit of burnt sienna a bit of aloes and crimson a sort of dark purplish color i think i would describe it this seaweed and then with this smaller synthetic round brush as i say the the surface is still quite damp and i'm just dotting in here and there little bits this darker this darker color and we're getting a, a soft edge because the surface is still quite damp maybe towards the shoreline it might, might be a little bit drier there because i went in a bit more sparingly with the paint but down here towards towards us it's a good bit damper so i'm going to get a, a better softer edge there It will dry a little bit light in this, this so it won't be too severe. Next step is to paint in those background hills, but I need to make sure that the bottom of the sky is fairly dry don't want to have too softer an edge over there for the sky so just just with my fingertips just check the surface it seems to be all right and with a slightly smaller brush now a me a, a medium sized a medium sized round brush synthetic brush pick up something dark not too dark i want it to from a from a, a a depth point of view i want to push this back a little bit so i don't want to go too dark particularly in the middle of the scene where where that's furthest away this this village of sheldon on the far side of the estuary and there's a little sort of this this thin slither of a bridge uh, going across the going across the river and then this side of the bridge there's a sort of sandbank and a few craft just um, out there so while it's just drying a little bit more drop in a bit of color on the foreground and I'm ready to do those far hills on the left hand side and they're going to come down to the cabin of the larger boat on the left hand side so i'll paint up towards that it's quite 
nice actually this boat the, the larger boat splitting the background in two because I could then that, that gives me a bit more time to do one side before I do the other side rather than having to do it all in one go so it's a nice bit of a, a gap a bit of a breather between the between the two sides now on the right hand side the continuation of those background hills is going to create a nice bit of contrast to the light hitting the side of the cabin so i think that will work quite well from a, a sort of impact point of view go a little bit bluer for the distance a gentle slope down to the river and the top of the road bridge doesn't need to be too too straight it's in the distance it's we're looking at it against the light so it doesn't have to be completely perfectly straight come down a little bit lower over the back of the larger boat tiny bit of green as we come down there's some distant trees so we'll just I'll just add a tiny bit of green for that you can see I've I've left also a little bit of thin slithers of paper showing through they could be some distant rooftops catching the light and then down to the river itself there's some very simple almost like rectangles there's some boats that are moored out there here's another one very simple just squares and rectangles but instantly because because it's water the viewer will just read those as simple boats another one there just continue on with this sandbank going across and then I'll just have a few little verticals for the supports to the bridge just a few dotted along the length of the bridge maybe close up a few of those gaps and over on the left hand side I do need to add in some darker hedgerows that being a bit closer to us we can see some distant trees along the skyline and some hedgerows there as well bit of burnt sienna bit of altering blue tiny bit of neutral tint if I want to go a bit darker as well and this mixture now will have less water on it so it's not going to create any any blooms or cauliflowers it's got less water in it than the the surface below and because I'm painting on a damp surface I'm getting a few little subtle soft edges appearing I don't want there to be too many hard edges over there because we want to push that further back if I had hard edges it would just be too clear too detailed and uh, it would appear I think a little bit further forwards perhaps just a few down there further away and as as it dries that those little darker splodges will spread out just a little bit and get lighter as well so the harbour wall on the left hand side we've done that undercoat if you like of the the left hand side 
I'm now going in with these bands of the blocks making up the harbour wall, starting from the top and thinking about perspective. So a little bit wider, closer to us, then going a bit narrow into the distance up to the side of the boat. Not too perfect an edge as well. We want to try and make this harbour wall look a little bit weathered and and beaten and and show its age a bit so not not perfect straight edges and then these little gaps being the tops of those blocks and also each row will be a different shade of brown just just vary the color starting off dark at the top a little bit lighter in the middle and then darker down towards the bottom where there's bits of seaweed growing and it's it's also a little bit damper uh, down towards the bottom so a bit darker down towards the bottom of the harbour wall up to the edge of the boat and I'll keep that left hand side quite loose there's some sort of construction materials or something going on over there but I don't want there to be too much detail so just fairly random brush marks going up to the side of the boat and I'll I'll connect the the harbour wall with the boat with some shadows shortly tiny bit of shadow that's coming out there's, there's a these materials and there's a sort of dead tree trunk or something coming out from the left hand side uh, but it, it can be anything just want to keep it not too not too detailed at all over there right now for the boat the largest boat which I suppose in a way is a is a is a, a little bit of a focal point, particularly the right hand side of the cabin catching the light. The front of the cabin though, I'm keeping it sort of like a mid blue. Careful top edge. It's important to have a brush with a, a good point to it. And then down to the, uh, the top of the hull of the boat. Just checking the surface of paper just to make sure it's dry enough for me to do the rest of the boats. The I tend to do with the boats like this, I tend to do the, the actual shading, the, the uh, actual darker colour of the boats and then and then their shadows all in one. And that's what I'm going to be doing with this larger boat, getting in now this hull a little bit dark for the hull light edge catching the top of the hull just checking i can still see my pencil lines this is where it's very important to get that initial drawing right with these boats because it's difficult to try and change your mind halfway through the painting you you've got to really get that drawing right and then just just hopefully you can see those pencil lines through the initial wash now darker still for the hull it's a little bit of it's mostly a darker sort of it's like a navy blue in a way but it's got bits of red or warm color in there But I, I just really see the the value, how dark is this hull? That's the most important thing to me. And then 
concentrate on that first, drop in a bit of colour later on. Let's just continue on down, down the hull to the top of a boat just resting on, just slightly leaning to one side. Go to the back of this boat. Harder edge there, the back of the boat. Continue on over the top of the smaller craft in front of it. Straight edge there. Just colour in the rest of the hull. Now thicker still, darker. Continue on down, splash in a little bit of red, that cadmium red. C cadmium red is, is so bright, it's quite nice when you... It's, it's great for tail lights of cars as well. Um, and then just dotting in some colour like this. I tend to mix those darker colours up the top there is my preference and then the middle mixing well on the right hand side is for the cools and then the bottom one is reserved for warmer colours. Now the shadow of this, the, the, lar the shadow of the larger boat is going to come down and connect with the two smaller craft on the left hand side. So I do need to be a little bit careful with the painting around here because we've got some light hitting the tops of these boats and I want to make sure I paint around those. I don't want to use white paint unnecessarily to get in that whiter rim of the boat, the, the gunnels of the boat. So just a little bit careful painting there. Make sure I've got a good edge, good sharp point for the inside of the boat. Now, lighter rim. Perhaps the left hand, the left inside of the boat catching a bit of light. Remembering the light's coming mainly from the top right corner. So a, a tiny bit darker on the right hand side of the boat. Now for these smaller boats, mixing up a bit of darker colour for the hull. I suppose a little bit lighter than that bigger boat I started with, but not a lot different. They, they are white boats, but we're looking at them against the light, so they are quite dark. And I'll go a tiny bit darker towards the bottom of the boat. Start off fairly light at the top. And I will later on add in a bit of trim colour to the top of the boats, which always makes a big difference. Gradually come down to the bottom of the hull and then mix in something quite dark a lot thicker, darker and thicker for the shadow of this boat going across the beach. I could I sometimes do have two brushes on the go when I'm doing things like this, or if I'm painting in cars, I'll have one brush for the light shade, the light shaded side of the boat, and then another brush for that might be that might be loaded with the darker, thicker paint, rather than having to keep washing out the same brush. Um, not with this one. I'll just use the same brush and just keep um, just keep washing the brush as I as I uh, go down the painting.
right near brush make sure i check my point make sure i've got a good edge and paint carefully around this curved part of the near side of the boat to us and then up to the back of the boat just a slight connection with the boat behind it just a tiny bit don't need to be too perfect with this if i if a little mistake happens it doesn't really matter if one if one boat bleeds into the other it doesn't really matter too much and then darker thicker for the bottom of this boat it's sort of good this this smaller boat i guess this is one of those smaller craft that someone would use to row out or get out to their larger boat that might be moored in the river but it's got a it's got a light half to it and then a light a lighter topper half to it but then a dock darker bottom half and then this that darker bottom half is almost in, in my eyes similar in value to the shadow coming out for it from it so thinking about the direction of the sun and it's just beginning to show a little bit of because the dress is on a little bit of light underneath the right hand side of the boat there so we've got a bit of shadow coming out towards us thinking about the edge of the shadow the contour of the beach it's slightly bumpy so we don't want a straight edge to we don't want a straight edge to the boat i can lift out the I'm, I'm painting in fairly humid conditions here so I can uh, the, I've got a bit of time on on my hands to lift out color or play around with the paint um, before it it dries too much before I can isn't it, it watercolor gets to a certain point where you can't really work at it too much so I've got a fair bit of color now on the right going on the right hand side this this row of boats coming up towards us starting with the smaller one at the back similar process there's a sort of outboard motor or something on the back of this boat and then painting or coming up and painting to the top of the middle boat now middle boat the inside of it first darker right hand side tiny bit of light on the left hand side towards us or nearest nearest to us bit of light red a bit more Cobalt blue. Bit darker for the side of that middle boat. Paint around the, the light hitting the near side of this boat. And then the hull, bit of a bit of a curve on the left hand side. 
or a, or a fender, and then the actual hull coming up to the nearest boat. And then that darker, thicker color, neutral tint, alloys and crimson, not too much water. Pick up a bit of cobalt blue as well, make the shadow a bit cooler on this one. It's always good with shadows just to introduce a bit of color into it. And thinking about what color, what what color is causing what 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 object or thing around that that shadow is causing that that little bit of color to be injected into the shadows. So not not strictly speaking black or grey. Now nearest boat gentle curve around the near side. Just be a bit careful with that just following my line along. Pick a bit of water, a bit of cobalt blue up to the bow of the boat, sharp edge or hard edge, sorry, of this bow down to the bottom of the hull. And it's got a tiny bit, tiny bit darker towards the bottom of this one. Pick up my darker shadow mix again. And then immediately drop it in alongside the hull. So we get that a smooth transition because I'm doing it sort of all in one. I'm doing the hull, then the shadow of the hull. We get a, a, a soft transition, a smooth transition from the hull to the shadow. This is no hard edge. And then at thinking about the edge of the shadow as well and the contour of the beach and bits of dried seaweed and uh, and and debris they're just uh, not not creating a straight line or straight edge to that shadow edge Now for the inside of this boat, now I bit, need to be a bit careful now because being right-handed, I don't want to smudge the hull of the boat as I'm painting inside. Check the edge of my brush just to make sure I've got a got a, a good edge to that brush. Start at the back and we'll sort of expose a few of these seat uh, seat panels, which I haven't drawn in, so I'm just kind of guessing where they're going to be and thinking about the perspective as well. A little bit of a, a narrow one in the distance there. Coming up to then a slightly thicker one, sort of in the middle or slightly towards the the front of this small craft. There we are, that's define that and then continue up to the bow. Carefully, there's that straight edge, carefully along that straight edge. And there, up to, not too fussy with the front of the boat there's this little bits and pieces along the top of the boat that for, for mooring and rigging and so on so it's not too not it's not a completely smooth rim to to that boat now for the boats on the right hand side this larger 
I think it's a fishing boat with the back of the boat to the left, starting from the top, just in a, a very loose way, painting the top of the, this, this sort of mast that's got lots of sonar equipment and radar stuff on the back of it, then a few horizontal um, masts. There's uh, a little bit of a, little bit of a, a, a sorry, a vertical mast, and then the actual main hull itself, leaving a few little horizontal gaps where the light is catching the hull or little bits of the, the harbour to the right-hand side. And we'll come down to the top of the that yacht that's on its uh, on its stilts on its uh, keel so quite dark quite thick for this color just moving from left to right coming gradually down and then painting around the the little boats these smaller boats on that right hand side there's one there Or about here. That's the near side of it. And then a bit more of a, a shadow from the harbour. Near side of this boat and its and its shadow. There we are. Sort of a boat shape. I hadn't drawn it in but looking at the photo there are a few smaller craft over there on the right hand side just catching just a little bit of the, the tops of the boats catching the light just suggesting some extra craft there framing that right hand side and now the yacht and the furthest boat there just on the left hand side we can just see the like almost like a half of it same principle as before paint the inside and then the top of the paint the inside of the boat then paint the top of the hull bit of a shadow for it up to the side of that yacht which is going to be a light lighter in value and i need to have a little bit of light feeling of a little bit of light hitting the top of the cabin of this boat and a rim for the, the top of the hull so here's the cabin And then the hull of the boat going up to the bow. Come down to bottom of the hull, go a bit darker. Now pick up some neutral tint, a little bit of Alizarin crimson. And finish off with the bottom of the hull. And I think about three... Uh, keels that are that are coming out from the bottom of the hull. Uh, one, two, and three, and a shadow underneath. Now the shadow is going up, is connecting with the main boat on the right hand side there. So just a, an, another another point of connection, and let's continue the rigging or something rather up to the right hand side just to join up to the right hand side so it's not too empty on that on that right hand side there well i've got this dark paint and just a, f a few 
more strokes, just a, a sort of flurry of strokes on the right, on the left hand side. When we're now getting to what I would call more of the detail stage, just to pull it all together. Generally with a smaller brush, but I'll, I'll stick with this brush here. It's got a good point to it. It's got a good edge and we've got the right, got the right sort of paint on it already. So just continue on. And there we are, a little bit of a, a mast and sonar equipment to this boat. I, I really don't know what they are, but uh, just to, in a fairly loose way, look at the photograph and just look at shapes, really, of these objects and and how they relate to each other and their connection on the on the top of that cabin. There's a, a, a pole or a mast or something going up on the left-hand side of that boat. Not sure if it's actually on the harbour side or it's immediately on the left-hand side. Doesn't really matter. Just a, a another sort of vertical bit of interest there on that side. Now, three windows. I didn't draw these in, so... Just painting them in freehand, these three windows on that right hand side, left hand side. Not perfect rectangles. There's a tiny bit of light coming through from just really exposing some of the distant hills, I guess, um, through those windows. I'm not bothered with too much detail on the right hand side of the cabin. I want to keep that fairly light. I think adding in some darker, darker lines, bits of trim across the tops of the boats always just makes them a little bit more believable as a boat. These, these sort of painted lines. So here's another one here for that boat there up on the left hand side. They can be sometimes done with a fairly dry brush so that you get a slightly sort of faded line, which just indicates a bit of paintwork coming off the boat. There we are, just a few lines along the shoreline. Maybe a few more bits of seaweed dotted around the place. Not not too much. As I said earlier, I don't want to I don't want to overclutter the foreground and make it too detailed with all of the bits of debris and dried seaweed there would just, uh, I think it would just detract from the the focal point being these boats and particularly that, that larger boat on the left hand side. I'll change to a, a smaller brush as I do some of the, the other details on the boat. So a similar brush, synthetic brush, but quite a good point to it. And not too much water on the brush. Almost anything that's that's still a little bit more liquid in the palette, I'll, I'll pick that up. And mix in something darker. You know, that that's for me, in, with my palette of colors, a bit of neutral tint, a bit of alizarin crimson, maybe a bit of ultramarine blue, something dark, but not too, not too black. And then with this smaller brush, just adding in a few details in there, maybe a, some, some lines there just to denote the lines going around the, the side of the boat. Perhaps a bit of rigging or, or something coming down the the front of that boat, some dry brush marks across the the beach. Where there's little white bits, I can add a bit of shadow this side of that white bit. It could be little twigs or something that's on the the uh, on the beach there that's just catching the light and a tiny bit of shadow behind them.
the same dark colour now on these right hand boats, a little bit inside the boats, a little bit around the outside of the boats, adding a bit more definition to the seats in the middle of the boat and the side of the boats and little bits and pieces along the rim of the boat, the gunnels where where the oars go in and bits of rigging might be attached to those those smaller boats. Alice and Crimson, tiny bit of ultramarine blue, bit of neutral tint, a sort of classic trio really, and follow the line uh, uh, along the just along the bottom of the rim of this boat, that that sort of darker edge. I'm not painting every single line I see, but just a few to indicate what's going on there with the boards along the boat. A few more verticals, um, posts or that mast on the boat. Bit of rigging, perhaps some of the rigging's got some seaweed or something like that caught up on the on the uh, rigging there's a darker line there going towards the that left hand boat they can they can be quite useful on a scene like this where you've got lots of boats on the shoreline or a harbor scene and having the rigging actually having having the perspective of those lines just leading the viewer's eye into the scene Always quite effective. A little bit of dark shadow underneath the blocks of the uh, harbour on the, the left hand side. So those lighter lines will have a little bit of dark darkness above them, which is the shadow of the block above that light. Tiny, just a few little faint verticals there, the, the sort of vertical gaps between the these blocks on that side. A bit more detail to the boat when I've got this small brush. To add a bit of extra impact or a little bit of light to some of these lines and, and lighter areas, I, towards the end of the painting, I use a small brush with some pure white paint or white gouache. And I'm going to be using a rigger brush from Lebensen. And this rigger brush, it's a lovely brush, and it produces a very fine line, which is ideal for rigging or power lines that sort of thing with with a little bit of paint on the brush so now being careful and just really practicing in, in a way I'm, I'm a bit like a golfer I'm practicing the the uh shot just before just before the execution of that shot so a couple of lines on the left hand side just practicing that line and then going for it trying to create a, sh uh, a straight line and maybe some of these lines will have a few gaps in them so a line then a gap then a line then a gap that can be that that too can can prove to be quite quite successful a few little 
railings on that yacht, bits and pieces catching the light. Maybe a, a mast, a, sh a short mast over on the right hand side. To strengthen up some of these, the tops of the boats, but not too much. I don't want to overdo it with this white paint, but just where it just needs strengthening up a, a tiny bit. And maybe some bits and pieces on the beach that are catching some light, top of that fender. Where there's a darker patch, I could just add a little bit of light above it where where it could be a, a twig or a bit of dried seaweed or something like that that's just catching a tiny bit of light. But as I say, not, not overdoing it. It's quite thick paint here, not well, no water added to it. It's just really straight out of the tube. Perhaps a little bit of a, a very faint line on the right hand side, not too, not too strong on that right hand side. I want to keep it fairly simple. And that's it done. As I, as I normally do at the end of the painting, just a, just a quick summary of where we got to on this. So and a, a demonstration of how to paint boats in watercolour and a scene taken from Teamworth in Devon in the UK and this is the back beach looking west fairly late in the afternoon summer's evening the light hitting the the light hitting the actually quite nice zooming in there you can see the sort of shapes you really need to take time to observe a scene and looking at the shapes of the the these different objects look at the curved nature of some of these blobs that's why sometimes it might be good to if you went in quite dark with that sea, just adding in little blobs of light, and, and those blobs of light, they've got a little bit of darkness around them, do you see? Um, ever so subtle, but it makes all the difference just to create that sort of convincing, um, the, the, the sort of shimmer on the surface. But a nice scene with all these different types of craft, the the framing of the scene, we've got, um, we've got the sort of framing on the left-hand side with that big bow, we've got the the larger fishing boat on the right hand side we've got uh, a row of craft there we've got a row of craft here a line rigging line taking us into taking us into the scene lots of different values as well darks and lights i emphasize the the light hit, hitting that uh, cabin on the, on the the larger boat on the right hand side but light and dark really dark on, on, particularly in the, the shadow of some of these boats, that one on the left-hand side, this one here, for example, and the light, sorry, the, the, the shadow underneath, <clears throat> excuse me, some of these, these boats as well. Uh, and then looking at, wrong way, looking at the my finished painting, there it is, my impression of Teamworth, looking west, distant boats, light hitting the the surface of the water using the the rough fairly rough texture of the paper very basic sky some little bit of light hitting the uh, tops of clouds for example that bloom there this thing here it doesn't really matter that's what watercolor does and it's it, it can be quite useful in clouds or um as a sort of uh, the way to do old old buildings or old walls or a larger shadowy area it can be quite nice to introduce that slightly different pattern that texture but all these different craft trying to connect these different objects as well connecting is is quite important not to have something to an, an object too far out on its own trying to connect them with their shadows or rigging or some something to to get the sort of cohesion going in in the uh, composition and keeping that foreground fairly simple there was lots of seaweed and debris and stuff 
um, going on there. So if you're if you're a Patreon, excuse me, if you're a Patreon member, have a go with this. You'll have access to a high resolution image um, and a, a high resolution photo of my finished painting. If you're not on Patreon, then check it out just to see if that uh, would be of interest to you. Love to have you on board if you're not on Patreon right now. And join in the fun and, and try and improve your watercolour as well. So thanks for watching. Catch up with you on the next video. Cheers.